Real quick, before the rest of the video starts, apologies on the quality of the video because my camera settings were jacked and I didn't realize until I started editing. So the rest of the video quality will be not as good as it should be. Hopefully it's still watchable though. Cheers everybody. Hello, hello, Steve, Canadian Sasquatch, coming at you with another Mead Monday. But today we're not talking about meads, or are we? We're going to talk about brackets, which are a mead, but are not a mead. But before we get into all of that, as always, the CSB store link down below, where you can buy all your mead making paraphernalia, mead methodologies, my book, uh, my shirts, and other people's books and whatnot down there. There are Amazon affiliate links. So when you purchase through those links, Amazon sends me a couple of pennies and it really does help out since I'm still jobless. Also below will be a link for all you Houston area people. Um, I'm selling off my brewing equipment, a lot of it. Uh, the link will be down below of everything that I have and how much I'm asking for it. And it's only going to be for Houston people only because shipping will not make it worth anybody's while to ship it outside of Houston so yeah buy my home brewing stuff lastly Mead Mondays would not happen without you guys these are based off of the questions you guys ask and so to keep the ball rolling I am asking you to ask me more questions Hit me up in the comments down below with any of the questions that you have. Uh, if you've asked a question in the past and I've not answered it, then I apologize. And go ahead and answer in the comments down below, uh, re-ask your question, and I will be sure to jot it down, taking better notes now, and I will ask uh, answer it. Ans answer ask. I will answer it in the next video. So yeah. Ask the question below and I will answer it in the next video or next few videos, depending on how many questions there are. But yes, Mead Mondays, your questions. Thank you so much for all the questions so far. Let's keep it rolling. More questions, please. Now, enough of all that nonsense. Let's talk about why we are all here. And that is braggots. This here is my rye barley wine braggot. Uh, bottle right here for you guys to check out part of my angry squatch series because it didn't turn out how I wished it to but that's not to say it's not good it is very good I'm very happy with where it came up to but we'll get into some more of that later so what is a braggot I touched on this uh, in one of my uh, thirsty Thursdays when I was reviewing the Bragan Squatch Braggot, uh, the link will be up there um, for that review. Essentially, a Braggot is a mead with malted grains or a beer with honey. So it is a combination of beer and mead, which is one way to make a Braggot. You take a beer, you take a mead, and you just pour them into a glass, blend them up. Uh, that's a quick and dirty way to take off the shelf items and make a braggot in your glass. Or if you're brewing yourself, you could brew up a batch of beer, brew up a batch of mead, blend them together, age them in a carboil or a keg or what have you, and you have yourself a braggot. Another way to make a braggot is to make a mead and add malted grains like barley or rye. Look, this guy's got both barley and rye. And of course, the last way to make a braggot is to make a beer and add honey, which is actually how I make all of my braggots. I make a beer and I add honey to them. So the next question is how much? How much honey in the beer to make a braggot? How much grain in the mead to make a braggot? There is no definitive answer other than enough to impart 
the flavor of the ingredient in the beverage. So if you're making a beer with honey, you want enough honey in the beer to get some of that honey, some of those honey qualities in the beer that makes it a bracket. So if you are making like a light lager or a light pale ale, then you don't need very much honey at all. Uh, if you're making a big Russian Imperial Stout or a big barley wine, then you need a lot more honey to get those honey flavors to shine through all those grains that you've added. And the same happens for the mead. How much grain you want to add to your mead to turn it into a bracket? Well, if you're making like a hydromel, you don't you can just toss in a handful essentially of the grains. Or if you're making like a big, huge, sweet bomb of a melomel, then you're going to need a lot more grain in that mead to turn it into a braggot. And of course, once you have enough of those either grains or honey to have those flavors in part, well, you can add a whole lot more if you wish, or you can keep it at that bare minimum. Either way, as long as there's enough to impart the flavor of either the grain or the honey, then that's how much you really need. Uh, so it will take some playing around with to figure out what those uh, ratios are as it was. Um, personally, as my faithful viewers will know, I like big beverages, big flavor, big ABV. The bigger, the better. So with mine, what I do for all of my braggots is I brew a beer. Um, we'll take this one for an example. So the grain bill is essentially 50% barley, 50% rye. That's why it is a rye wine braggot. So say we have six pounds of barley, six pounds of rye, Combine that together so we have 12 pounds of grain. I now add 12 pounds of honey. That's how I do it because I like those big honey flavors along with those big multi flavors and they just combine nicely at that ratio for myself. Yes, it creates a lot of alcohol. Yes, it creates a lot of sweetness, especially depending on the yeast you use. And since we're talking about yeast right now, let's talk about which yeast. Well, it depends on what you're making. Um, for all of my braggots, I use a wine yeast. I use uh, Lavalin's D254 to ferment it out. Just That's all I use. Um, I like it because it brings a vinousness or a wine quality to it. Uh, it ferments the honey nicely. It leaves some, behind some of those malty sugar so you get a little bit more malty backbone and it just it's a high abv um off the top of my head i don't know what it is so do to do right here for the lavalin d254 uh, and yeah it just imparts a lot of flavors that i like in my braggots that said you could use an ale yeast you could use chico you could use a burton yeast you could use um a saison yeast. You can use whatever yeast you want to bring to the party to add flavors. So the yeast impart flavors. And then this is a nice segue into flavorings. How do you flavor a braggot? Well, beside the grain bill and the honey that you're using, so you'd be using all kinds of different fun grains, the caramel grains, the dark grains, all that, and then all the different honeys, all the way from alfalfa, clover, wildflower, all the way up to buckwheat, they all impart different flavors. But you can also add other things. Uh, since a braggot is a beer and a mead, beer has hops. You can add your hops. And with this guy right here, I use Brambling Cross and uh, Target because I wanted those specific flavors. Brambling Cross is known for a little bit of a spiciness rye is a little bit spicy so yeah um, the target was just a bittering so i can bring those ibus up to so it wouldn't be as sweet or as cloyingly sweet thanks to the bitterness so another thing that i did to this guy to add flavors was 
I took a mason jar, filled it full of frozen dark cherries. Then I poured 10 year old brandy on top of it. Soaked that for a good month or so. Took the cherries out and in that leftover cherry liqueur brandy yumminess, I added oak cubes. Um, I believe it was just uh, American oak at the time. Medium plus toasted American oak. I added that to the mason jar and just let that soak for several months. The cherry brandiness got into those oak cubes. And then with this guy, while it was aging in secondary, I tossed those oak cubes in. So I got cherry, I got brandy, and I got oak. Three flavors right there. Add it. So whatever you want to add for flavoring, you can. Uh, this one right here, this one's got uh, cacao nibs and vanilla. It's a, it's my chocolate braggot. So yeah, whatever you want to use, just like in a mead or a beer, whatever you use to flavor those guys, flavor them with the braggot. And it's, it works as long as they're complementing uh, flavors. And then going back to the wood, a little pro tip here is if your braggot is too sweet, like just way too sweet for your palate, cloyingly, whatever, add wood. The wood will leave behind some tannins, which will reduce the perception of the sweetness and quite often make it a lot more palatable to yourself. Plus it imbibes or embeds a little bit of those uh, woody flavors, which could very well work out for that beverage. Um, it doesn't have to be something that's been soaked in alcohol for six months or anything. You can just pour them out of the pouch. Uh, it doesn't have to be oak. You can use apple wood, cherry wood, mesquite. Any wood will work. They all have their own unique flavor profiles and they will all uh, add tannins to it to bring down that sweetness perception. What about carbonation? As you can see by this guy, it is not carbonated at all. I do try to carbonate my beverages. It's in a 187 champagne bottle because I was trying to carbonate it, but a lot of my high ABV 14% uh, beverages, I just cannot bottle condition to get them to carbonate. But that is not a problem uh, with these bigger, heavier, thicker beverages, carbonation is not really missed. Um, think of it as a big imperial stout or a big thick mead. It's like you don't really want those really carbonated. Like a little bit of carbonation in the imperial stout is nice. The big thick mead, you don't really want any carbonation in that. With the braggot, it's the same thing. It's like depending on how big and thick it is, depends on what, how much carbonation you want in it. If you're making like a light hydromel pale ale type uh, braggot, then yeah, some carbonation would be nice in that. It would help bring those flavors up and aromas up to your face and smack you around a little bit. But the bigger ones, perfectly fine still. Um, but as I mentioned in my uh, review a couple of weeks ago, uh, you can see that right up there. Um, this guy, four years later, has started to carbonate, and it has brought out a whole new experience in drinking it because of the carbonation. So if you can carbonate, give it a try. This was one of the reasons why I actually bought a kegging system was to keg all my big beverages to carbonate them so I could see what they're like carbonated since for some reason I just can't get the whole carbonation in the bottle down on anything over about 12%. And so there you have it, braggots, tasty beverages, beer with honey, mead with grains. That's all they are. Just go to the store, walk down an aisle, grab a bottle of mead, grab a bottle of beer, pour them in a glass and you have yourself a braggot. Quick and easy peasy, just like that. And with that, that is the end of the question. So uh, as always, as I mentioned at the beginning, these Mead Mondays are not here without your guys' support, so thank you very much for that. Ask your questions in the comments down below, and again, if I have not 
gotten to your com or your question at this point please comment down below again um i will be taking much better notes from now on so i can make sure i can get through to everybody's questions as they come around um i quite often will give a brief answer in the comments but if it deserves a much longer response then i will definitely cam up and make a mean monday out of it also if you have enjoyed the video learned anything please give me a thumbs up but if not didn't like it whatsoever no worries give me a thumbs down but let me know why you're giving me a thumbs down so i can work to improve these videos and turn your thumbs down into a thumbs up deal also if you have not yet subscribed i invite you to do so and since you're down there beside that subscribe button you might as well ring that bell that way you're Become part of the notification squad and you'll be notified as soon as one of my videos are posted and then you don't have to worry about when they're being posted you just get a email or whatever and saying hey Canadian Sasquatch has a video go watch it right now and then you don't miss it and one last thing if any of you guys are into nature stuff whatsoever I do have a second channel where I'm doing uh, nature vlog stuff uh, there'll be a link right here there'll be a link down below just in case you want to check it out support the second channel uh, if not no worries just figured I'd mention it I do have five or six videos over there now so uh, yeah check it out completely different from everything that's on this channel essentially and with that my friends be sure to have a plan of awesome I know I will Cheers, everybody.